Gran Turismo, the role-playing game of races, returns with the seventh entry in this long-running series. Now more than old enough to drive itself as it hits 25 years old, is this latest entry a new chapter in the simulation racer's legacy? Let's start the engine and find out. have always strived for photo realism and thanks to the power of the PlayStation 5 they have made another leap here. Specifically in that ray tracing mode exclusive to the PlayStation 5 and the game also supports full dynamic weather and cloud simulation with improvements on the best quality version here in the PlayStation 5. Now how does this leave last generation? Well I suppose the first major area I'm sure many are interested in is performance. And I'm happy to report 60 FPS gameplay remains as we saw in 2016's GT Sport. Unlike that previous mode though, now on the PS4 Pro you only get one mode and that's the high resolution mode with 60 FPS gameplay and 30 FPS replays. The PS4 is the same, 60 gameplay, 30 FPS replays. Before we get into that conversation, let's talk about gameplay on the PlayStation 5. One of the areas of confusion across the internet as a whole was whether ray tracing is on in gameplay or replays or where the hell is it turned on and off? Well, I can clear up that confusion by telling you it's turned off during gameplay, no surprise there, and it's turned on during replays and those interlude sections of track camera panning. Now this means that you get reflections, much better quality materials across the board in all those sections that use it. Now it only uses ray tracing on car materials and bodywork and interiors. It doesn't use it on the track side, doesn't use it on the ground, or even interior shots here in replays that are gameplay, like that reflective on the helmet and visor. All of that is just dynamic cube maps. So that means you get much better performance because if you did turn on in gameplay, A, you wouldn't notice it because you're just going too fast with everything else going on, and B, performance and all resolution would be heavily affected. Now you can see here the worst case scenario, like all racing games, if you want to stress the engine out, which I know people will do, then stick yourself at the back of the grid in a heavy range section with all those heavy high quality particle effects, no half resolution solutions here, even the alpha mist on the particles of the cars, all those light effects in the background coming into the cockpit, the shadow casting light sources on headlights across cars, even then it only drops down to the mid 50s. That's very impressive when you consider that this title is pushing native 4K at these levels. Now remember, this means that you get no ray tracing in gameplay, no matter which option you choose in the menu. So therefore the gameplay tested here is the same no matter which option it is. And predominantly that's a locked 60 FPS, which feels smooth and responsive. And there's no issues at all with the PlayStation 5 performance. Exceptionally good and it looks absolutely amazing in both modes. So what about those beautiful replays, a big part of this title throughout the generations? Well, obviously it's a different conversation at this point. Here you can see the absolute worst case scenario. Obviously on the right, you've got prioritized frame rate and prioritized ray tracing on the left. Again, like gameplay, this is native 4K, but it is stressing the engine out and the hardware because everything is full resolution. All those particle effects, those lighting effects that are shadow casting, multiple light sources here, and obviously multi-million polygon count models, 20 of them in one screen, you are likely to see some performance hiccups, and we do. Most of the time into the next refresh of 33 milliseconds can see mid-20s to low-20s at worst case on the ray tracing mode and low-40s at worst case in the performance mode. Overall though, outside of these heavy stressful sections, which you'll never get worse than this, other than these shots looking back at the grid start, again, similar situation with high poly count, depth of field, or those high quality resolutions in terms of post-processing per object and per pixel motion blur, all of that is really, really aggressive on the GPU, and it can cause these mild stutters that you can feel throughout the title at certain points in replays. But generally, once you get into it and the cars fan out, you never feel any problem with it, and it's smooth performance performance and looks incredible in both replay modes but the ray tracing one takes the biscuit but I'll touch on that at the end of the video. 
Now, talking about the PlayStation 4 and the PS4 Pro, we would expect everything to fall apart, but obviously this is Sony, and they do a great job to make sure everyone gets the best piece of that pie, and they have done that yet again. Performance is exceptional on both consoles. PS4 and PS4 Pro both target 60 FPS, and again, do an exceptional job of delivering that. Aside those single-digit 33 millisecond spikes that you wouldn't see outside of this kind of frame rate analysis, predominantly, it's a locked and smooth 60 FPS during gameplay. Here, being able to actually line up exact replays in gameplay mode is a big benefit across all the hardware by uploading your replay to the shared page and then downloading that back down it doesn't upload a video it uploads a data file that is then replayed back so only around eight megabyte per replay for an entire video very quick very smooth and obviously you can then change all the settings and line up ps5 ps4 pro and ps4 this means in identical sections we're getting almost like for like performance on both pro and ps4 and in replays again it drops down to 30 fps but aside those rain-soaked heavy shots that we've just discussed in detail on the PS5, for all the exact same reasons here, again, high-resolution particle effects and mist, it can judder a little bit into the mid-20s at certain points. Very rare, very brief. These are worst-case scenarios. In fact, for a 10-year-old machine in the PS4, it's absolutely incredible how impressive this and many of the titles are this year a lot have come out on the ps4 and still delivering these kind of visual quality and high resolutions relative to the age of the machine it really is a very impressive showing yet again from polyphony here again you will get those long shots with depth of field heavy multi-million car model polygon counts here obviously that's going to cause a few dips for the same reasons as before once the actual grid fans out you get into the standard four five six cars per shot it never really skips a beat and feels smooth and responsive sometimes on those camera pans across track as you're waiting to line up that can also have some slight judder specifically on lateral movement as the camera moves across but overall that payback in terms of visual quality for a few dips here and there in some of the stressful sections is worth it because the replays look incredible, but more importantly, gameplay is almost a perfect locked 60. One area the PlayStation 5 really leaps ahead is yet again that SSD and I.O. infrastructure of the machine. Four second loading times from the menu into the actual dashboard where you can move between tracks. All of that is around twice the speed of it is on the PS4 with an SSD, a PS4 Pro, and obviously the PS4 base. But when you get to the tracks, which you'll be doing a lot, again, four seconds. That's five times faster than a PS4 Pro with an SSD and ten times faster than the base PS4 absolutely incredible leaps in terms of loading and this title has a lot of menus and sub menus and it's very hierarchical structured in terms of going from one menu to the next just like classic gt but this is almost cartridge level loading times and this is faster than what it was on the ps1 at certain points and i played that just recently for a retrospective so i know the speeds we're talking about here again it's a huge leap forward and it makes all the difference when you're jumping between tracks and obviously loading into your next online match or even just an arcade race if you want to choose one So what else is the PS5 bringing to the party? Well, in the frame rate mode, it offers a much higher resolution, much better ambient occlusion and shadow quality, much better materials and texture details, and overall higher resolution on screen space reflections, shading quality, and everything is ramped up to another level over the Pro. Hard to spot, but here zoomed in, you can see those dithering elements on the wheel, the detail overall of the alloy itself, and the shelf shadow and occlusion on the calipers. You get higher quality texture details, much better reflections, on materials here even in the frame rate mode as you can see here that matte metal look on the mini on the pro is a reflective surface using some element of screen space reflections there which looks much more accurate but ray tracing is where it really ramps up the game ambient occlusion is much better materials can take on an entirely new look as you can see from the metallic area of the center of the mini here actually reflecting accurately the scene it's in all those reflections on the door the self shadowing on the interior of the door itself the ambient occlusion at the back of the dashboard, even those Fresnel edge specular highlights around the leather seat. The reason here is the physically based materials used in the title are amongst some of the best in the business, and being a car focused title, they are metallic based. 
You can see the strength of the ray trace reflections used here as it emphasizes the micro facets of the surfaces, allowing highly uniform surface such as the chrome bumpers here in the Mini to reflect the tow bar or even itself. This enables light to bounce and that includes global illumination. See here as the bright red bucket seats of the Honda Civic bounce the soft red diffused hue onto the leather steering wheel or the faux carbon fibre dash. And all of this is due to the composite of each scene allows each material to differentiate itself from the other. From the black plastic of the dash to the red material of the seat so you can see that inner weave of the seat and even the red hue is subtly different thanks to the ray tracing. From the soft leather of seats in cars or the matte paint here of the gold caliper which allows most light to penetrate the subsurface and then diffuse across it it emphasizes the subtle imperfections of the surface bringing new micro details you simply cannot see without it and that includes those subsurface areas of inner reflection and obviously concave sections are the most responsive to those Self-shadowing is also improved with far better and more accurate shadow filtering and ambient occlusion and this carries on outside with far more shadow casting objects, higher texture details on grass, buildings, road and improved asset quality. Higher foliage is used with better shading on them and again grounding within the world and all these elements are cemented by the dynamic weather and cloud system allowing night and light and all areas to drastically change from sunny overcast rain and more it all adds up to a great looking title on ps4 and the pro but one that can take on a whole new look in specific sections thanks to these enhancements even in the frame rate mode but the ray tracing mode is my preferred way to play as the balance the team have made between gameplay 60 and replay 30 gives the absolute best bang for book and allows the game objects, materials and cars to shine in the best light yet. What about resolutions then? Well, obviously, it's not a lot to discuss here. The PS5 comes in at 3840 by 2160 in both modes. Again, 6030 replays, all of it just runs at 4K native, very clean, very sharp using a TAA solution, and it looks exceptional. The PS4 Pro and the PS4 come in at respectively 3200 by 1800 approximately for the Pro using an element of checkerboard rendering just like GT Sport. And again, it can highlight some of the dithering areas in terms of shading, screen space reflections, specular highlights, all of that can have a little shimmer. And then the PS4 Pro comes in, again, impressive, 1920 by 1080 Fully native by the looks of things, very clean, very sharp. Again, that TAA solution means that it's very stable and doesn't suffer a lot from shimmering and a very impressive image quality, even on a 4K screen. Visually, everything else between the Pro is pretty much identical to the PS4. The only difference I could note was the PS4 Pro has slightly higher levels of foliage at certain key points in the title, but it's incredibly minor and you wouldn't notice it outside of this kind of zooming in. Effectively, they're the same game, except one is significantly higher in resolution. The only other benefit or loss, depending on where you look at it, is the PlayStation 5 has per object pixel based motion blur in gameplay, which doesn't run on either of the other two consoles. And there is one more, and that is the planar reflections in the rear view mirror on the PS4 Pro are actually higher LOD and detail than they are on the PS4, with things culling much further away in terms of the PS4 Pro and the PS4. You can see it here as I zoom in, but again, probably hard to spot as you play. And again, this is boosted even further on the PlayStation 5 than the Pro by having higher quality texture filtering and details and polygon count in that planar reflection. Again, just drawing things even better. This is Polyphony back to their passionate petrol loving best. A return to form of GT in the 90s and really delivers on every single front. For those petrol head car racing aficionados like myself, it really ticks every box and becomes a trip down memory lane. 
Visually, they've made all the right nips and tucks in all the right places to ensure the best balance between PS4 and Pro players getting one of the best looking titles the console has ever seen as a swan song, but also utilizing the additional power and benefits the PlayStation 5 brings to deliver the best looking visual package, the fastest loading, and overall, the most pristine looking and enjoyable GT title you will have ever played. Whether you pick this up on PS4 or PS5, you are in for an absolute treat and nobody will be disappointed with the results inside. And hopefully you weren't disappointed with this deep dive into game technology, performance and all things game related. And if you were, then keep it IGN and we'll be back very soon on the next one. When I found you